Hello, and welcome back to my witchy channel. Today we are going to talk about one of the Sabbaths on the Wheel of the Year, and that is Imbolc. Now, Imbolc occurs on February 1st to February 2nd, and it is the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. In short, it is a time of celebrating spring, the return of the sun, and the return of the sun god. So today I am going to go over some correspondences to Imbolc, how you can celebrate, and one of the major deities that is related to this Sabbath. So the earliest written record of Imbolc was around the 10th century in Ireland. The holiday is basically centered around the idea of spring and rebirth. One of the most central figures in Irish lore and in the pagan celebration of Imbolc is Brigid. So Brigid was a daughter of Dagda. Uh, she is one of the most powerful goddesses in the Irish or Celtic pantheon. And it is said that she has two sisters also named Brigid. This nowadays people tend to think is more of an idea that she is a triple goddess and that she was a reflection of three different uh, kinds of women as opposed to actually having two sisters that have her exact same name, but this is disputed. Uh, I would like to think of her as a triple goddess figure. She is known for blacksmithing, poetry, keeping fires. At some point, Christians decided to take the idea of Brigid and uh, turn her into a saint. And she was a saint that was in charge of uh, never-ending fire and calves. So this was something that was celebrated in the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, there is also a celebration on February 2nd known as Candlemas. That was from ancient Greek uh, Christianity as far as I'm aware. And that involved obviously the burning of candles, uh, the celebration of the sun returning, and of course spring coming back as well. So it is argued whether or not the Saint Brigid was a real person. Uh, obviously Candlemas and and the Feast of St. Brigid are very much connected to the original pagan roots. It said in the 12th century that a bunch of nuns tended to a fire that had been going for 500 years and produced no ash, and this was Brigid's flame. And it is argued whether or not Brigid was an actual person. Apparently, she did pass around 524 AD, and there are supposedly uh, remains of Brigid, in churches in Portugal. Brigid actually created something that was a mixture of wailing and singing that is referred to as keening. And keening is something that would be practiced during funeral rites in Ireland. One of the biggest symbols that you will see associated with Brigid is Brigid's cross, which I will put up on the screen now. Now, there is traditional versions of Brigid's cross that has three arms, but mostly today I find that you see the four-armed versions. And uh, basically, it is made with a reed and it is tied around the center in uh, different directions to create this cross. Apparently, people used to put these crosses in their house above their doorways to keep out uh, negativity and harm. Basically, it is said to keep your house safe from fire, illness, etc. It's kind of the same idea as putting a broom above your doorway or putting a, a five-pointed star or pentacle above the entrance to your house. So on the night of February 1st, people in Ireland used to burn torches and have fires in honor of Bridget, and usually they would make kind of a corn dolly representation of her. Uh, hoping that she would honor them and, of course, that spring would come quickly. So, how can neo-pagans celebrate Candlemas or Imbolc today? Well, one of the things that you can do, which is popular in a lot of harvest festivals as well, is baking bread. Uh, dairy products are a very big thing during Imbolc since, as I said, Brigid was um, related to calves and, you know, the beginning of spring and fertility and everything like that. So any recipe that you have that involves dairy is very popular. Spiced wine is also another popular one. That is also popular at Yule as well. Um, I think it's just this time of year that there's typically a lot of focus around spices. 
Some crystals related to Imbolc are amethyst, garnet, bloodstone, uh, turquoise, onyx. Did I just say onyx? I don't even remember. Um, so I have a bloodstone right here. I really like this. I don't know if it's going to focus on it very well because my camera has been dropped a couple of times over the years. Uh, but I like bloodstone. It's a really good like personal power stone. Um, I kind of use it to keep all my faculties in check and uh, hone in on the things that I really want uh, out of life. And we all know amethyst. This is my prettiest uh, piece of amethyst. Actually, I have three very large chunks and uh, I believe I also have a very small piece that I don't know where it is right now. But amethyst, uh, it's really good for intuition. It's good for astral projection. It's the color purple. It's very related to spirituality, psychic awareness, things like that. Just as with any other Sabbath, it's always appropriate to have a Sabbath meal. As I said, dairy products, bread, uh, food that has a lot of spices in it, curries, uh, anything like that. Like I said, anything that relates to the sun coming back, anything that relates to spring and the birthing of calves and all of that. Now, if you are a vegetarian or vegan like me, you will not really be using a lot of dairy, uh, in which case that's fine. Whatever you do, whatever you make, even if you're making bread, just substitute dairy-free milk for the the regular dairy, that's fine. Uh, there's a lot of really nice uh, veggie and vegan curry recipes online. Um, I make curry a lot, so that might be something that I actually make on in bulk. I'm not, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to have. Um, another way that you can celebrate is by having a ritual bath and by just lighting some candles on your altar. If you want to dress up your altar for in bulk, uh, you can do a couple of things. Uh, you can put different flowers to symbolize spring on there. You can make an altar in a jar if you don't have an altar. So I actually saw this on Instagram. I got this idea from Witchy Tips on Instagram. That's at W-I-T-C-H-Y-T-I-P-S, Witchy Tips. So it is an in bulk in a cup altar. This is actually really good for people, uh, for witches that are still kind of in the room closet, as they say. If you can't have a big uh, altar out on display because people might question what you're doing, you can do um, a little in bulk altar in a cup. And you can do this with any of the Sabbaths. You can make little uh, in a cup altars. So basically what you do is you get a glass, you fill it with salt to represent snow. Uh, you put a couple of sprigs of rosemary or bay in there. Uh, to show spring kind of growing, like coming back to life through the snow. And then you just put a little tea light or a little small votive candle in the middle, and then you can light that and just have this little teeny tiny altar in a cup. That way it's not something that's out on display, like I said. If you're in the broom closet and you can't have a, a regular or a permanent altar, uh, in the same way, if you do have a regular altar, you can put snow in a crystal jar. Uh, on the altar, you can put salt to represent the snow because obviously snow is going to melt. Um, you can put flowers on your altar, you can light candles, light incense such as uh, myrrh or cinnamon or something else related. Uh, Google is always great for getting ideas. There are tons of articles, uh, there's tons of other resources, people posting on social media, Instagram, TikTok. I don't use TikTok, but I, I know that there's like a whole community of witchy people on there. Um, so you can get ideas from really anywhere on how to celebrate. Another thing that I'm going to do, definitely today because I don't know how cold it is outside. It's Canada, so it's very cold. But I think I'm going to go for a walk. There is some snow on the ground, but it is very sunny and that makes me feel very hopeful for spring. So I will definitely go for a walk uh, as soon as I finish filming this video and uh, I think I actually work on in bulk so uh, probably will just be at work all day and then when I come home you know I'll have my meal and I will light my candles and spend some time at my altar probably do a tarot reading or meditation uh, so that's another thing that you can do there's lots of great ideas for tarot readings for every Sabbath online I get a lot of mine from Biddy Tarot on Instagram. Uh, I will put that on the screen and I will link that as, I'll link it in the description as well as Witchy Tips Instagram actually, since I am mentioning them here and I find them extremely useful. 
So that is basically a rundown of Imbolc. As I said, it is a spring sabbat. We are hopeful that the sun is coming back, that the plants are growing. It's a really good time to connect, to, you know, journal, think about your emotions. We're still going through a very hard time, obviously, with the pandemic, so just be kind to yourself and take a moment to think about rebirth and think about the return of spring. And um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to do more Sabbath videos, I will try to do them and have them out before the actual Sabbath, which is what I'm trying to do right now. Uh, since it is, I don't even know what day of the week it is right now. It's a Saturday for sure. <laughs> Uh, it is the 30th, so hopefully I get this out before Imbolc, and if you're watching it after, I hope that you enjoyed it still, even though it's past the time. So yes, like I said, if you want more videos like this, uh, let me know in the comments. If you want to become a member of my witchy family, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed day, and happy Imbolc.